Hello everyone, my name is Karen B and I wanted to tell you all happy equinox. That's right, it's the equinox. It is, well, September 23rd. Let's just go over the equinox a little bit because a lot of people think that the equinox is a proof that the earth is a globe, but actually, really, it's not. Not only is it not a proof of the globe, it actually works much simpler and much easier on a flat earth than it does on a globe earth. And I'm going to show that to you today. So what they say in Wikipedia, an equinox is commonly regarded as the instant of time when the plane, the extend, extended indefinitely in all directions of the Earth's equator, so the equatorial plane of the Earth, runs through the geometric center of the sun's disk. So they're saying that the equatorial plane of the Earth and the equatorial plane of the sun are perfectly aligned at the equinox. This occurs twice each year around March 20th and the 23rd of September. Today is actually the 23rd. Today. Yes. Hey, look at that. In other words, it is the moment at which the center of the visible sun is directly above the equator. So on a heliocentric model, if the sun is where they say it is, and it is directly lined up with the ball earth, then exactly half of the ball earth is lit up at one time and it should give you about the same equal day and night across the whole half of the globe. But as you will see, that doesn't happen. So here we are. This is my area. I'm here in the southeastern United States here in North Carolina. And it's 11-11. Oh, look at that. 11, 11. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. And <laughs> I see that all the time. And um, if you want to find the equal day and night of your area, you go to time and date and you put in your location and you look and it'll tell you that about the 23rd, they say is the equinox, the equal day and night, except you look here where it says day length. And on the 23rd, it says the length of the day is 12 hours, 5 minutes, and 24 seconds. And it's been getting shorter as we've gotten closer to today's date. But look, tomorrow, the day is even closer to being equal day and night. It's 12 minutes and three, 12 hours and 3 minutes long, excuse me. And then the 25th, look at this, 12 hours and 59 seconds is the closest to exactly half and half day and night in my area. Okay, that is not the 23rd, that's two days later. Okay, and get this. This will really blow your mind. This is uh, Queensland, Australia. Okay, Brisbane. This is the location I have selected for here. Okay, well, let's refresh. Let's make sure it's on the right day. Okay, over there it is 1.13 a.m. right now, but what we're looking at over here is when do they have their equal day and night? When does the day and night actually um, split equally half and half? And you'll see that they actually already had their equinox. Looks like on the 18th here, their day is almost exactly 12 hours. Look at that. And yet here, me, the closest I'm going to get to an equal day and night is 12 hours and 59 seconds. So you can see it actually varies quite a bit from place to place. And so if they had, if Australia had their equal day and night on the 18th, right? And now I'm going to have mine tomorrow on the 25th. Wow, that's a whole week. That's a week apart. Okay. And, you know, if you look at the mainstream explanation of why this happens, they're going to tell you that it's not actually equal because of refraction and the planets slow down the Earth's orbit. Like here, uh, what is it? 
Let me, let's see what it says. So on the day of an equinox, daytime and nighttime are approximately, approximately equal duration all over the planet. They are not exactly equal, however, due to the angular size of the sun, atmospheric refraction, and the rapidly changing duration of the length of day that occurs at most latitudes around the equinoxes. So here, it's going to be rising on my equal day and night at 91 degrees and setting at 269. Okay. Let's check it here. The 18th. Rising for their equinox at 88 degrees and setting 271. Okay, so it is off a little bit. And they want to tell you it's because of refraction and that the planets, you know, cause the Earth's orbit to speed up and slow down. They'd like to tell you that the equinox is because the ball Earth and the Sun are exactly 90 degrees apart from each other, or the equatorial plane of the ball Earth is lined up with the Sun's geometric center, and that is why everybody is seeing the sun rise at 90 degrees at the same time on the heliocentric model. All this stuff is backward engineered math, okay? You can't really prove or disprove that that is why the equinox happens, okay? The point of this video is that an equinox is entirely possible on a flat earth and is much simpler to explain. You don't have to have a ball in space. You don't have to have violation of the second law of thermodynamics where the Earth's atmosphere is up against the infinite vacuum of space without a hard barrier, without being a completely obliterated, all of us being dead. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, okay? But you have to ask yourself a couple of questions if this is really what's happening. Um, why is there such a fluctuation in the actual half equal day and night where the day is divided in half, half day, half night, if this is true, it should line up with the sun uh, rising at exactly 90 degrees for everybody and setting at 270 for everybody, okay? But it doesn't do that. It actually fluctuates quite wildly over the period of a week. In the flat earth model, this makes a lot of sense because the sun is small and close and it is traveling its circuit from the Tropic of Capricorn uh, back across or from the Tropic of Cancer back across the equator towards the Tropic of Capricorn to introduce the summer months in in the southern part, the outer part of our flat, enclosed world. It all makes sense. Another thing to consider is, if this is really how the model re really, really is in real life, how come the North Pole is so much more habitable than the South Pole? How come it is so extremely cold in the southern part of the globe? Why? Why wouldn't it be the same? How come there is almost no flora and fauna? In fact, there is no natural flora and fauna living out down there in Antarctica. It is cold, it is desolate, it is harsh. Even the penguins don't want to live there all the time. In fact, I don't even know how they do it, but they're the only ones who do. The temperatures in, in the Arctic Circle are actually much more temperate and it is a much more livable area quite far north whereas Antarctica is almost uninhabitable. I mean, if you listen to the conditions there, the living conditions there are quite harsh. It's mostly indoors. In fact, I interviewed a man who was stationed in Antarctica. He can tell you all about, all about it. I'll put a link to that video in the description. They can't prove that the Earth is even moving. No scientific test has ever proven that the Earth is moving. In fact, Einstein himself said that the Earth's motion cannot be proven by any physical test. So, them telling you that this is because of the Earth's motion and the planets varying Earth's orbit around the sun is all based on assumptions and isn't true. It's a wildly complicated explanation for something that on the flat Earth is actually quite simple. Thank Rob Skiba for making this video, this graphic that so eloquently explains how the seasons happen on a flat earth and it is because the sun is on a circuit above the flat earth and it goes in between the tropics, the Tropic of Cancer, the equator, and then the Tropic of Capricorn and it does not go outside of these lines because that is the sun's set path. When the sun is over the equator, 
That is when the equinox happens, when it's close, passing over the equator, okay? And the sun does travel from the Tropic of Cancer, which is north of the equator, to the Tropic of Capricorn, which is south of the equator, okay? Over a period of time during these seasonal changes, okay? And so that's what's happening. And that is why the days are not equal all over at the same time. That is why the sun is not always rising and setting at exactly 90 degrees due east or due west on the actual day that the night and day are equal lengths in any given area. It is because the sun is small and close and the light is a localized light and it is traveling its circuit from inside to outside its circle north and south of the equator around the plain earth. Look at this animation taken from real-time data of the sun's angles all around the plain. The sun on its path, completing its cycle over and over again, pulsing with the electromagnetic firmament. As you watch these two animations play side by side, you can see that the perfect, rhythmic, repeating, constant motion of the electromagnetic field goes quite nicely with the same cyclical pattern that the sun and moon make every day, every year, every season over the flat earth. Hey, listen, if you're interested in learning more about flat earth and how it works and you want to talk to more people who know about this, you've got questions and you are in the southeastern area of the United States, I highly suggest that you join us for Flattoberfest, which will be on October 24th in Greenville, South Carolina at a Shrine Event Center. You can go to the website flattoberfest.com for tickets, information on lodging and camping and who's going to be there and also a contact information if you have any questions. Cheers.